Welcome to my virtual campfire. I'm Crystal Kelly. In season two, I am exploring with you as masters of our own experience in an epic and unique time in the history of conscious life. We are all being called to do something unknown. I'm turning to the ancient wisdom when fire was the quantum shift that catapulted humanity. Now, we are the shift. When we connect consciously, we are connected with the new earth. We become the new earth human family. Through vibrations and conversation, let's enter this super highway of consciousness and co-create within the quantum realm of light. Today, I had a very special conversation that I'm excited to share with my good friend, Ryan Henry Ward. Ryan is a mural artist that is quite prolific. If you've driven around Seattle, anywhere, um, any of our neighborhoods, you have seen his work. Um, But he doesn't just share it with Seattle. He shares it with the world. Unmute. There you go. Oh, I'm just... Yeah. (laughs) How's, How's it going? going? <laughs> Good. Right I'm, in Pendle- I'm in Pendleton, Oregon. Pendleton, Oregon. Um, yeah. I've never been there. Yeah, it's like, a, I think it's a place where they have an annual rodeo. I think that's their big thing here. Cool. Yeah, it seems real rodeo themed. Uh-huh. But, um, yeah. Are you able to get out? Is there? Is it mountains or is it um, flatland? Um, I just drove down a big pass, so there is some kind of mountain next to it, but it's kind of in a valley. It kind of looks like that town that was in. Do you see the movie It? Stephen King's It. No, well, or maybe a long time ago, but I don't. Um. Well, there was there was kind of a recent one, and it looks like the town. It's like almost. Okay. Like, I wonder if it was filmed here. Possibly. Yeah, it just has a that kind of feel to it. But right on. Yeah. Cool. So, um, well, I know you're totally uh, in tune with the vibes of places. Like, you feel those energies. And you're, yeah. like, I see it come through in your art because your, your art has a, um, it's what every artist aspires to. Like, you have style. Oh, thank you. That's what you have. You have a style. And thank so, um, but through that style, you portray a lot of different energies. And um, so it makes me believe that you're channeling your art in a way. Do you feel that way? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, there is definitely a, um, um, an influence of all sorts of things that kind of um, are coming through me in a different, like, uh, mental spaces I'm in to environments to um situations um I definitely feel like uh um there's things pushing pushing through me from some other realm coming um out through my work um there was one time that I was painting the show and it it was more specific because I think we can relate with people more than um uh characters and other things that kind of are pushing through but like i was doing a show based on um heroes of mine and i painted 60 portraits of different people and as i was painting those people it was really clear that i was channeling um their voices and i could hear their voices like not like voices like in my head but like hear their voices like an um an audible like uh i guess the mental health professionals would call it a a, a audible hallucination Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, where it's not just a thought in my head it's an actual i hear the voice you know yeah um so i was hearing these voices as i was painting each person a different voice would come through and uh um a lot of times it was the person sometimes it wasn't sometimes it was someone talking on their behalf or something but um a super powerful interesting experience and um different uh kind of different it directed the artwork quite a bit yeah 
I think I remember that show. I had bought a print um, that you did of Hunter S. Thompson. Yeah. And that was, uh, yeah. he's a, I'm a huge fan of him. Like yeah. I um, fo have followed his work and have probably read everything he has written. And um, in a way, like I look up to him, you know, like yeah. as, as a um as somebody I look up to professionally, I guess. And uh you definitely captured his essence yeah. with that print. Like I I have it hanging in my house and it's like Oh you do? Yeah, totally. I, I can't I can't remember exactly, but it definitely just was so Hunter S. Thompson. I was like, oh my gosh, that's so rad. Yeah. I have to have it. <laughs> yeah, he's just like dripping existential sweat off of his exactly. legs. Exactly. <laughs> glasses and nose and just like really like um uh seeing the seeing the core reality of the situation even through his own like um delusions and stuff <laughs> it's like he could like peer through it all and still see it like <laughs> it, with the madness you know he was pretty cool pretty cool human really cool i i think through that madness i mean that's the lens that we have to look at life in the reality we're in right now, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. like every day I, I almost feel like, um, he had fear and loathing in Las Vegas, but, um, now we're fear and, and something else. I don't, maybe it's fear and Corona. <laughs> I'm not really sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there were a couple of things that I wanted to chat with you about just because I thought it would be fun. Um, and one of them is, uh, a, you you had given me the a Sasquatch stuffy to give to my daughter. Yeah. And she was five when I gave it to her. And um, like she sleeps with it every night. She loves it. She <laughs> loves Sasquatch. Like yeah, it's cool. like a thing in our house. Like you, you where's Squatchy? Where's Squatchy? You know, like it's like <laughs> it's like That's her favorite cute. thing. That's and awesome. I've always been fascinated by the concept of Sasquatch or Bigfoot. I've gone right. on two sasquatch huntings kind of yeah. um oh, one to uh mount shasta and yeah. then another one to the altai mountains in siberia and they okay. call the sasquatch there almas okay. um and but they're the same same beings i think uh yeah. and i also believe that around the perimeter of mount rainier i've sensed them as well um, mm -hmm. And that would be closer to, I guess, like my home or whatever. Um, yeah. So I just want, I want to ask you, what's your relationship with Sasquatch and, and how, like, what do you think of Sasquatch and Bigfoot or? It's more of like a wondering for me, like, uh, um, uh, I feel somehow called to portray Sasquatch in a friendly way. Mm -hmm. Um I feel like that's important to my work to uh, um, uh, portray him as lovable. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know what is like, um, like why or what's pushing that, but like, um, I feel like there's some, some forces telling me to like, um, make this an approachable, loving, um, uh, being because i think i i, I kind of have a, a sense that it's uh it's uh the portrayal of bigfoot or sasquatch is often um kind of like this monster this scary monster in the woods kind of thing and um and i think that that's kind of this like uh part of the dynamic that has controlled human beings is to get them scared of the woods and get them scared of nature and um pin us against nature so we want to control it or so that they can uh so the forces i guess bigger than us can control nature and us um or, or everyone else can uh kind of like kowtow to that uh um perspective so if there's like the mythology of fear coming from nature from witches from uh scary monsters in the woods um things like that that uh yeah that kind of 
we'll stay in your society, stay in your little city, and we're just going to clear cut the hell out of everything, and that's going to be okay because we're taking care of the scary monsters, kind of. And I think that that that's kind of a simplistic way of viewing it, but I think when you take some of these like scary things in nature, uh, these like you know witches or uh, I I used to paint this witch a lot, like that was holding a teddy bear because it's like <laughs> let's let's create these portrayals a little bit different and that kind of like disarms the, um, the narrative of uh, control of nature, you know? Yeah. One, one reason that I love um, art in general is because it a lot of times goes against the narrative that uh, maybe propaganda is giving and you have to do it in a creative way because if you outwardly say something uh, sometimes that can even, you know, be dangerous in a way, but um, artists are, are change agents, you know, they're like, you're able to, to make that mental mind shift in someone and it's very subtle, you know, um, just having a child now instead of thinking of a Sasquatch as um, scary, like what you were saying, um, it's her protector. You know, right. like yeah. she has to have that because she feel, you know, it's a, it's a comfort item for her. And so that has, is instilling that at a younger age. And so, yeah. mm -hmm. so the, um, the effect you're having on the next generation is profound. Yeah. I just did this mural in Sumner and it is a, uh, big, it's a Sasquatch with like a walking stick and he's kind of leaning up against a tree and it's like the murals in this park looking right at the uh, um, playground. So there's like this big um, park and a playground and then there's this mural that kind of like looks over it all. And I, I wanted that like um, sense of like a guardian protector kind of. Um, and I want like all the kids in Sumner to think of Sasquatch as this like guardian protector rather than this like, um this scary thing and I you know and it's like in a kind of a conservative like logging town area um where nature is we're um kind of told to control it and mean you know um manage it and maintain it and this and that and like um and that's all driven through like a, a fear narrative so I think changing that for the children and saying, you know, like nature's uh, safe and fun and there's things actually looking out for you um, there, then it'll make them not want to like destroy it like their parents kind of right. once thinking or whatever. Because, I mean, I see it as um, the, the more disconnected that we as humans are from nature, the more confused we get, the more disease, the more um, uh, unrest. Um, but but once you embrace that we are the earth and the earth is us, we're all interconnected. Then yeah. you can you can at that point you make affirming choices for everyone involved because because the earth is a being, you know, so right. it's, it's not just for us, it's for mother earth too. So, so all of that is, um, is, yeah, it's, um, it's exciting. I kind of think that they, the reason that we can't, um, capture them on, on, you know, camera very easily, I think is because they vibrate so high that, right. that they just, um, you know, they, kind of uh evade our perception right so yeah. you know they're they're there but we just yeah. i mean they're so so loving and so helpful and so they're just like a, a feeling of peace or something right yeah 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 definitely there's a uh, um i think i think that is true for a lot of these like little woodland creatures too like gnomes and elves and um these other things that uh uh i have seen like i have seen gnomes in the woods and out of just the corner of my eye and then look 
directly and then the little village disappears and stuff like that but, so like to me they're i see them and they're there i haven't like seen a sasquatch out of the corner of my eye or anything like that uh but i just have this like i spend a lot of time in the woods so this is coming from somebody who like spends a lot of time in the woods i i hike daily and i like get out in the woods as much as i possibly can and um spend a lot of time sitting and listening and um uh and i think that's a lot of it is like uh just learning to listen you know and not just like with your ear but with like your heart and like um changing your heart to like a listening heart and um, I think once you can kind of do that, you can you can get in touch with these other beings that are there that uh, might not like have been, uh, you know, like in our I guess industrial society have been kind of dismissed as uh, kooky or weird or um, not true because they don't um, uh, help us produce and create goods, <laughs> you know. Um, so they've become like useless to the dominant narrative or whatever, but that doesn't mean they're not there. Um, and I, I think once you can like open your heart energy up to the possibility of things, then uh, and kind of push away this like uh, uh, ultra like productive we're only here to produce things and you're only a valuable person if you're productive and all that whole like um kind of mess we've been given then uh you can kind of channel and open up to these different things and they'll they'll speak to you in different ways yeah i i agree i think that um there there was something that you said that made me start to think about um you said learning to listen and I feel like uh, you, the best listening to do, I think it is in, in silence almost, you know, like, like just kind of turning off the devices and, and, you know, stepping outside, obviously, I think that connects you almost instantly, just breathing the air outside. And especially when you're in the forest, there's more oxygen. I mean, <laughs> like you can get yeah. higher right there, just, just right. with more oxygen, you know, so, yeah. um, and all of that activates your, your creativity. And, right. um, and I think as humans, that's what makes us unique is, right. is the ability to create and to, um, you know, make our own reality. Like we don't, we don't have to live in fear. That's, right. that's like, I, I mean, that's just kind of silly when, when you really right. think about it, because, nature's abundant and everything we need is is within our reach we just can't take too much yeah 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 definitely yeah learn i think learning i think now is the time to transition out of uh taking like what you said taking too much i think as a, a society of, of people we've been kind of like um we've gone from like hunter gatherer to like agricultural to like industrial and it's just been this like kind of fear of survival that um has carried on in our genetics from like an early time and then uh uh we just kind of let that run rampant and um there's a lot of us collectively doing that but we can kind of uh cult like i think it's our job as like humans, mystics, uh, what, whatever, um, people that are in touch with and sensitive, I guess, to like, start like taking that, um, uh, mindset and kind of altering it. And I think that's like my direction as an artist is like, and why I feel drawn to doing public murals and doing them the way I do and using like, uh, fun characters animal characters and um mythical creatures and stuff like that and bringing them into the forefront of like uh you know showing people that squirrels have consciousness or you know um things like that um squirrels are playful 
loving beings that deserve a, a place in the world just as much as we do or whatever. Um, and that's kind of like the, the shift I'm kind of feel called to doing in this world is like uh, communicating to kids, adults, you know, breaking those barriers, doing art that kind of breaks the barrier of, oh, this is only for adults or only for educated people or only for, I'm trying to do like a universal form that everyone can kind of relate with and then go, oh, wait, this is like uh, part of the shift that's happening. You know, that, uh, we're being kind of like, we have taken too much. So let's dial that back and try to find this balance, you know? balance that's that's exactly um i think i think that's that's exactly right we need to get back to an equilibrium of um you know because because nature is able to write balances all the time you know you think yeah. of if a species gets a, you know overruns an area then then things happen in nature that that make you know put it back into balance and so yeah, we're at that tipping point kind of of where we're so far tipped um, that uh, I think I think there is some concern with people that you know may, maybe we've tipped it too far. Um, I don't believe we have. I think um, I think that's why you're here right now. I think that's why we're talking is so that that we can just raise awareness and and just one one little thing at a time you know, can really have a profound effect, even yeah. if it's a tiny thing. Yeah. And I, you know, I think, uh, encouraging, uh, people with, uh, you know, to, to follow their bliss. And I, I think that our natural bliss, our natural happiness is kind of returning to that balance with nature. And that like, so just by like, following your creative path you kind it like eventually guides you to this place of like helping the world like um I, I notice a lot of creatives might start out kind of like um selfishly and then they kind of transform as their like journey goes on you know like i'm just listening to this like beastie boys uh book right now and i'm just like watching their like or as i'm listening to the audible book i'm like watching their growth as like people of like being young and dumb and in their 20s and how they were behaving to how they like grew into these mature awesome people that were like more uh guided to help raise awareness and consciousness in the world you know and ask for forgiveness for their like dumb ways and just it's just kind of cool like how like they were following their bliss and it wasn't perfect you know and then eventually by doing that they became um more uh sure and a, a guiding force i feel like a, a lot of times art or music um can kind of start off from an ego standpoint you know like i like uh that might be more of your motivating factor, like, oh, uh, I want to get noticed, I want to get seen, or something like that. But I, I think that uh, that's why art and music heal, because I think through that process of, um, it's very humbling, and, um, you know, life isn't easy. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and I think that, um, that it's a tool that can be used that um, helps you process how to maybe not depend on your ego for your nourishment right. and instead you look for things that kind of fill up your soul and and yeah. you think like i i know i'm here for i'm on a mission but right. like where is that mission and you know i think some people everyone finds it out at a different time like yeah. it's that's the you know we all take a different path and and so but but I do think that that music and art are a really instrumental part of finding a, a, your soul's purpose because everyone has to have one. Right. Why, why else would we be here? You know. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Yeah, it's uh, um, 
And it's it's really painful and hard to be in this world when you're off your path, you know. Mm-hmm. It really is like uh even if you're like um like for me it's been this like pro- like a kind of a messy process with my path. It wasn't just like realizing that oh I just need to commit myself to doing art and everything will be okay. Like there's other things too. There's like um there's so many internal layers I have to work through and I'm still working through but like uh um I had to quit like abusing my body with like oh you know over consuming substances or whatever and uh these things that were just like um numbing my mind and numbing my soul and body to like not allow that intensity to kind of come through me because I was scared of it you know I was kind of just like scared of like the reality of being an an open vulnerable being on this planet that's like that i I do have some abilities to channel things um and i'm channeling a different realm and bringing it into this world and it's intense and it was like uh and so a lot of it was like get on the path and it's messy but you know your everyone knows their path there it's an inherent drive um uh and I, I avoided it for years, you know, I tried everything else besides painting because I knew that like deep inside, I knew I was meant to be a painter and I just didn't, I was scared of like where that was going to take me and what it was going to do to me. But um, in the end, it just like, the more you let go, the more you like let go into your passion, your drive, your calling, um, and let that energy of the universe like work through you. Um, it, it might be messy at first and it might be a process, but the process is what like a personal transformation when that starts happening in ourselves, that's when it starts happening in the world because we are a very strong element in this world. And so if we can allow ourselves to be transformed, um, then the world starts transforming. Yeah, I mean, I think every every human that can heal on the earth, then, because you can't help someone else heal until you've healed. So, you know, like I think about, you know, I'm a mom, so I have to take care of my kids. And and sometimes it, it seems selfish to heal as a mom, you know, like I, I think, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't go walk on a five mile walk because that's how I, that's for me, that walking meditation is what I need every, every day, you know? And, um, and, but, but then once I, once I step outside of my house and my, my world and I'm, I'm just there in the park or something, I can take that breath and just, you know, relax Mm. and breathe into it. And then, and then when I get back, I can take care of my family way better than I did before because right. I'm not uptight. I'm, I've, you know, taken that time for myself and it isn't selfish. And, um, I think, I think once I, I was able just as a human to realize that I am not being selfish, um, then I, I gave myself that, that, um, like what you were kind of saying, your, the permission to, right to do those things. And and then that is kind of when you start creating more. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're more, um, you're more attuned to your, your nature, you know, you're attuned to, uh, who you really are and you allow things, uh, to create. I don't, you know, you allow things to create through you because you're giving, you're, you're able to like, give that space for it to start you know otherwise you get cluttered with the day you get cluttered with all the details of everyone's needs and every, everyone needs a million things from you i'm not a, even a parent you know um i don't have i've never had children but like man i get pulled from every direction all day it seems like from 100 people you know everybody <laughs> wants a, a little something and um mom dad brother uh um nieces whatever you know everyone's got a birthday um everyone's got like you know there's there's like 
a million things going on in my personal life and then my professional life there's like you know a ton of stuff going on and like if i just let that that external world and everyone's wants and needs be the in control i'm a disaster you know i can't do it there's no possible way but if i get centered with myself and like let things come out from there and let something else kind of flow through me then everyone somehow everything just works out and everyone gets their needs met and i'm like um good you know so uh and i have a place to like operate from and i naturally know where when to say no and yes to things and um uh i know how to like be i guess we're human beings so yeah. you know yeah. we're we're here to be <laughs> yeah yeah and we're not here to just be like puppeted by all the situations around us either exactly you know? um because that no matter uh whether no matter what you are or or who you are or what you have or how many people are in your life or if you're you know have a demanding occupation or whatever there's always something that will like distract you and um you know it it just doesn't matter like those things just kind of happen to everybody we're all in this like big swirly mess together and like you gotta like ground yourself and like every day like it's it's not just go do it once it's like what you're saying like you need to go for that five mile yeah. walk every day like otherwise you know that's when it like is helpful uh it reminds me of um back to that show you were talking about of the portraits you did i think another one you did was of the dalai lama mm -hmm. did you do a dalai lama one i did but not for that show it wasn't I, for that show I, okay I, I, I did it right after the show though okay because like, i'm remembering that that image of yeah. the dalai lama and um and I, and it reminds me of kind of what you were saying, because uh, I, I was listening to an interview one time and, and they asked him, um, well, when do you meditate? And he said, all the time. I'm, yeah. I'm meditating right now and I'm talking to you. I'm right. aware, you know, yeah. I am, a, I'm, I'm present. Mm -hmm. um, and so anytime you're fully present in the, in the moment, Right. And you are in a meditative state. And that kind yeah. of blew my mind a little bit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool way to look at it. Like your eyes can be open. Your senses can be, you know, like in meditation, we like want to kind of close those things off sometimes so we can really like go inside. But like, it's not necessary. Like you can have your eyes open, you can be interacting and you can still like, it's just like maintaining that like uh core of where you're at you know it's like um i think it's this relationship with the our thoughts so like our our relationship with our thoughts and our feelings we're like if meditation shows us that we're the observer of those things so you become the observer of your thoughts and feelings through like closing your eyes and being aware of your um what's going through your mind but then like and once you realize that your thoughts and feelings are the same as the external world like it's kind of the same you're just the observer of that too so i think once you like really are just the observer your eyes can be closed open you can be talking to people you can be in silence you can be sitting in the woods you can be in a room full of uh, a thousand people and uh it's all kind of the same thing because really you're the observer of all the crazy stuff or whatever. Like you're just the observer. You yeah. Know? We're watching this like giant hologram of a, yeah. of, of like a movie playing out bef before our lives. You know, I think, I think we are like, um, a, a supercomputer say, but we're 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 tied to the universe you know we're plugged into the universe and and i think i think that once we acknowledge that and we we tap into that and you know maybe maybe we're all kind of like our plugs are all a different puzzle piece you know like it all we're all we all have you know a different purpose for the greater whole but but we all need to be plugged in you know to this 
mm-hmm. this universal energy that that we can feel and and like channel like you were saying and right. um yeah i like that i like the idea the metaphor of the supercomputer um that's like uh you know plugged into like uh a, a, a source energy because like I think a lot of times we allow it, like, let's say society is like a, um, a, a low energy. So we're a supercomputer. It's draining that, our batteries. Yeah. Or, or we're plugged into like 12 volts or something. And then like, there's like the, the 110 option and the 220 option <laughs> to plug into, you know, and like um, the 110 option is pretty awesome. That's like, uh, you know, maybe like, plugging into like a positive cool community or something and your life gets better right you're not just like um walking through the steps of like this um brutal life like the 12 volt life or whatever and then so you you found a cool community of people so that's the like 110 you got cool friends people are positive people saying nice things to you but then there's like the 220 voltage that you can plug into which is just like the super amp like um uh you know the the divine source or whatever like the uh, the crystal energy like i feel like sometimes i like i i get so excited about something and then i realize like oh my gosh i just completely overwhelmed whoever it was i was talking to because i just have so much energy and i'm like you know trying to express it but um so yeah I can totally uh, relate to that. But sometimes, you know, sometimes 110 is just a good way to go. <laughs> it's yeah, sometimes it is. Yeah. Sometimes it's like pull that plug, put it in that one. Or yeah, yeah even slow like, and you know, steady. <laughs> uh, unplug the whole thing and go to sleep for a while or whatever. Yep. I don't know. Like, yeah, sometimes we need a break from all of it for sure. But um there's uh just knowing that we are this like this supercomputer that is capable of like um, plugging into different uh, uh, energy levels, and the more uh, you know that we're we're capable of more, depending on what we're plugging ourselves into, you know. Yeah, I think um, I read a book, and I'm not going to remember the name of the book right now, but a neuroscientist or a, a neurosurgeon wrote it, and he wrote about his. Um, experience dying and then coming back yeah. to life and he um operated on people's brains um yeah. and he he didn't believe that there was he was very scientific and he did not believe that there was anything after um death and i remember that at the very beginning of his book he said when he was young he was really into skydiving and one time there was a skydiving accident and he, um, his chute didn't open and he was going right towards his friend, like they were in free fall and he lost control. But he said what he did with his body in the amount of time and everything that happened that saved his life, it was a split second decision. He said, I didn't make that decision. The computer took over. You know, yeah. like, so he thought of his brain as this, cool. like, computer. He was like, I was like sure. a supercomputer. I was superhuman. I did something that should not have happened. And so then when he had this experience where he went to another realm and he died yeah. and his, literally his, like, business partner, his his doctor associate that worked with him was, like, treating him and um, yeah. and that that realization that he had that that yes the brain is is a supercomputer but there's also this other energy that is like beyond that was for him like I I don't know just um and again I don't know where I was going with that but like it reminded me of it and and it's a it's a really I mean that is like we are like an energy you know right yeah yeah, definitely. In a supercomputer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. In a matrix. <laughs> right? Definitely. <laughs> and it's so interesting our like uh we have this like perception lens that like um changes on depending on the energy that we we have in our body. So like um like if I'm living in fear, the world is a fearful, scary place. Yes. Um, 
if I'm if I'm in guilt, if I'm feeling guilt, then the world is a like tempting place, like that want you know, or like if I'm feeling uh, safe and loved, if I if if that's like the core feeling, then the world like my perception changes just based on like um, kind of what's going on in my body, what energy I'm tapped into, or what the like foundational like center that I'm living out of um changes the world changes so like it is like a matrix and it is like a choose your own adventure you literally the world changes because your perception of the world changes and that's really all we have is our perception so the world changes um depending on what uh your core feeling is you mm -hmm. know so like if i'm if i'm feeling joyful and happy and peaceful and all these things then the world is this safe um supportive place with a lot of opportunities that present themselves you know but if i'm scared living in fear um trying to get my next fix of whatever my addiction is um whether it's like money or drugs or sex or whatever my that thing is that fear domain then the world just those doors aren't open. Those opportunities of for positivity, you know, aren't open. You know, my mind can't see it because it's looking for something else. It's it's hiding, and it's um, like once you're hi if you're scared, you're hiding, and once you're hiding, you can't see the uh, the um, uh, positive things that the world's constantly presenting to you. But if you're in this place of like love and safety and these things um then those things just continue to open up for you and mm -hmm. like it's not it's not a fair world some of us have been more abused than others and some of us are from backgrounds that are don't allow us to feel that that much but it really like is the job of all of us is to find that like thing that makes the universe magical brilliant place to live and mm -hmm. it's and what does that is changing who you are inside that's the only way that those things can happen and the way you can see the world that way is changing that like uh whatever whatever's going on inside you is the way you perceive the world and once you yeah. can have control of that and understand that and really like experiment with it like you know like allow yourself to like ask yourself if that's true you know and then like um kind of talking to anybody in the audience that's watching this is like just experiment with that like and see if that's true for you and like when you're scared of something like see how you perceive the world and when you're feeling loved um see how you perceive the world like just experiment with that and then once you kind of realize that it does shift the, your perception then control it, then take control of your in, inward world. I I just had yesterday this situation where um, I got an email from a tenant and they were mad. They were like mad at me about something. It wasn't anything I could control, but like they're just right. mad. And so I could tell by the words they were using that they were really pissed, you know, like they were like, right. gonna go try to find a new place to live. <laughs> like, right. you know, like it was like a big deal. Right. And to me, it wasn't a big deal at all, but I wanted to, to validate that yet. Yeah, okay. Like I apologize. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't know that people were putting things in the garbage can that was the problem is the garbage cans were overflowing and they're always a mess. And I had no idea the situation was going on. Okay. And, um, and so I thought, well, what would make, what could solve this? I can't control that people are putting garbage in these cans, you know, and how, what is a solution? And so I emailed and I apologized. And then I said, well, what if I come and put locks on the cans, you know, like maybe that will help. It's not going to help today but it'll help in the future you know and right. but it was um I felt like at that point I had a lot of different ways I could have reacted to her right. email and I instead of just responding right away like 
Yeah. Sometimes I do. I just, I kind of brainstormed in my mind real quick, like, okay, what, what solutions could I have? What, you know? And, and so then I ended up after sending that email, she was fine and, you know, not looking for a new place to live and everything. And so that is a, an effect that my thoughts had on the reality, you know, right. that was presented in, and I think it took a positive turn. Well, I know it took a positive turn, but depending on the way that the response could have come from me, I think it could have gone down a lot of different roads. <laughs> yeah, this is good conversation. This yeah, is Yeah, it's great. It's great to see you. And how are you doing? Oh, I, I'm doing good. I'm really yeah. focusing on um I I had this realization after and this is I think about five years ago, um, I had gone down to Peru to do some plant medicines and had this like moment of clarity where it was like, I knew what I needed to do. And I, okay. I, I kind of have always thought of myself as like a writer. Like that's why I love yeah. Hunter S. Thompson, you know, like I, yeah. that's how I see myself. And I always thought I was supposed to write stories, but, but I had this moment of clarity where I realized I am supposed to help tell other people's stories. Cool. Like, I'm just like a facilitator and maybe that's a channel, a, a right. broadcaster of it. I don't know. So I've been really focusing on doing um, my podcast and talking to people cool. who I think are really positive and that yeah. um, make a change in, you know, in wherever, wherever your art is, I know that it's, um, it makes a positive change. And, and I think that, um, it's just, I think we all have our own way of making that positive change. And so maybe like a little bit of your story can help inspire somebody to take, to make those new decisions, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love, um, uh, I love, I love it when that happens. I try to, um, I, th I think when I'm focused on that, when I'm focused on um, inspiring others uh, rather than trying to see what I can get from the world, um, that's, I think, when I find happiness, you know, yeah. like I, I feel more fulfilled that way. Um, and so I'm just like constantly uh, looking and saying yes to opportunities that where I feel like I can like um share something unique share uh um share more of myself more of my story in hopes that like people can find their path you know mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I found my path and I don't feel like everybody has and I feel like um uh I have somehow found my path through maybe other people's stories that were on their path or something like that. And so yeah. like, I feel like, um, I guess I just feel like that's what I'm here for is to uh, inspire people to find their like soul purpose, you mm -hmm. know? And that's, uh, I think that's like my deepest calling. I think that's beyond my artwork or my, um, my writing or storytelling beyond all of it is this like I want to help other people find what makes them feel uh present and uh valued and important on this planet yeah and, yeah yeah because I mean we all have um uh I like how earlier you said that sometimes it's like it's it's a messy way that you arrive at at things and a lot of times like I didn't really know exactly why I felt so driven to start this podcast but I really did I, it was kind of like one of those things where once I got it in my head I nothing there was no technical thing there was nothing that was going to stand in my way even though yeah. there's always excuses you know what I mean I could have been like oh I don't know how to audio edit or I need someone sure. to help me with that or some you know and I just was like one day I just sat down, I was going to figure it out. I watched like YouTube videos and like all these yeah. things. And I'm like, nothing's going to stop me from doing this. Like no one can stop me because this is what I want to do. And, and I, 
and it's it's done something that I didn't expect and it's it's inspired me to do more but it's also like brought about I think like um uh like a joy like a something inside me where I'm like oh my gosh this is so fun and and it sparks different things like I don't know I the other day I, I had interviewed a witch for Halloween you know and um later on after after the podcast um she had sent me a message and said my youngest sister listened to the episode two times and uh she hasn't spoken to me in like over 10 years and this has completely mended our our bond like with wow. each other and yeah. so it, it I was like oh, wow yeah. I didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, how would I, for one, I didn't even know she had um, a younger sister, you know, like, right. and yeah. I, I didn't know what her like family um, situation was, but it was clearly something that both of them had been upset about. And just for whatever reason, the door wasn't open to starting a conversation, but you know, whatever it was that she said on the podcast and her sister was able to listen and to, and she listened twice, you know, and then, yeah. and then called her. And so, I mean, if that's the only change this podcast makes, I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm, I'm good. I'm satisfied. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. It's like, yeah, the things that we don't know, the, um, yeah, I'm uh, constantly, my mind's constantly blown by that. Like, uh, um, I guess there's this, uh, um, a native American myth about the Raven that steals the light. And, uh, um, I always found that character interesting because that character was out like trying to accomplish something kind of for themselves or whatever, like stealing the light. And then they like fumble and accidentally like create, uh, night and day and uh so it's like this this funny flawed kind of flawed character which i think is like all of us right like trying to like do something in this world and then like we like bump our head against something and it like creates something we had no idea that we didn't set out to do you know exactly. and i think that is like this um uh probably one of my favorite like mythological like stories because of that like um i i just is so relatable like I, I feel like this flawed selfish person that like wants to like do something for myself and then i like you know stumble and fall and like then joy is brought to everybody <laughs> you know yeah. it's like oops i didn't mean to do that you know <laughs> <Totally. laughs> intending to make like you know uh everybody's super stoked and happy but there they are <laughs> you know <laughs> kind of like oh i i guess i would you know something something bigger might be in control than myself here so exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't um uh bonding family ties or, or reconnecting people is not what yeah. i had in mind but yeah it's a it's like um bob ross you know every he would yeah. call his mistakes a happy mistake because right. like he'd be like oh let's let's paint a bird. Oh, I messed that up. It's now it's a happy tree and like, you know, covering right, up his yeah. mistake. And, yeah. and I, I always, happy, I like yeah. thinking of, of life that way because it, it is like a series of near misses or mistakes or right. random coincidences that make yeah. no sense. And then, yeah. and then like, whoa, this happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm trying to, I don't, I don't come with any questions. Like, I, I maybe should prepare a little more, but um, no, it's been great. I feel like we've had a lot of good stuff to talk about, and um, yeah, I think just that just naturally happens between the two of us. It's just like uh, uh, good things just come out. We're kind of like on the same wavelength with a lot of stuff. So it's yeah, just, uh, definitely you know, always, always easy conversations that go someplace really cool. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so where are you headed? Um, well, I just, I'm, I'm actually headed home. I'm like, uh, I just did this th little over three week road trip. I went down to, um, I went over to Montana and I painted a mural in Glacier 
National Park, and then I went down to Arizona, and I painted a mural down there. And then I had like this cousin family reunion in Sedona, and then hiked a bit there, and then went over to Santa Fe, and uh, did some hiking there. And then I spent like um, a big chunk of time in um, uh, Moab and hiking in that area. And I'm just like blown away by Moab. I uh, I was there 18 years ago, and I just went. I kind of cruised through, and this time I like, um, and I went. I just went to the national parks in that area last time, and this time I have a dog, so the national parks. I was able to go to Arches because it was raining and cold, and I could leave my dog in the car one day. But the rest of the time it was sunny, so it was all about hiking in spots I could take my dog, and that caused me to explore the area in a different way and that place i mean i was hiking like 15 miles a day it was just like epic endless canyons and everyone is unique and different and mind-blowing and like i just am so impressed by like um i'm so blown away by the earth right now and like um seeing all the layers of rocks and all the different formations and um like truly feel like magic is everywhere so yeah that's yeah. cool i um you're really inspiring me to go to that area because <clears throat> that was actually that was a pretty mind-blowing trip i um i'm pretty sure i saw a spaceship on that trip <laughs> yeah like i don't i don't really know but um it was like dark with no lights like yeah. there were no lights at all right. and and, you know, it felt like the darkest dark I'd ever seen. I even thought that in my head, I was like, could it get any darker than this? Like, yeah. you know, like that, that went through my mind. And then I saw the brightest light I'd ever seen. Like, it felt like it encompassed wow. okay. my entire peripheral everything, just like this bright light. And I thought at the time that if I had blinked, I would have missed it. Okay. So, I thought it was like instantaneous, okay. but, but then, um, I think my mind couldn't process it. And, okay. and I, I, I think there is more time there, but I, I didn't know how to process it. So, so that was, that was the last time I was in Arizona and any desert area like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. pretty, I still know what it is. I don't know what it means, but right. it was well, it profound. could be after extraterrestrial there is a lot of that southwest um there is a lot of for some reason that area must have good landing pads or something mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's going it's on it's like but, um, uh, i see it as like the earth has an electromagnetic grid you know yeah. so like just how we have like chakras and stuff there's like um these yeah. points on the planet that have yeah. a stronger pull of electromagnetism and I've and I, yeah. I think it makes sense in my mind, I don't know, but um, that these places of, of the higher energy and the higher electromagnetic waves um, just basically pull the ships in, you know, because right. they're, I don't know. So to me, that's what the purpose of, of that electromagnetic grid that, that sits around um, our planet is, is for, I think, to connect us to the, you know, to the universe. Um, yeah. Yeah, maybe they're yeah. fueling fueling up on that kind of energy or something too. Maybe, mm -hmm. the maybe the ships run off of it or something. I don't know, but I agree with you. That area um, is uh, I I feel it like I'm super sensitive to that kind of electricity and that energy coming from the earth. And like, I mean, I know it's like measured. You can measure it with like tools and things like that. Um, the electromagnetic stuff but like i just i feel it in my body and like um there's certain areas like that that are like man like moab i was just like super amped up the whole time i was there like i could have like i was hiking 15 miles a day but i could have you know easily done um i was i was with somebody but i could have easily doubled that it seems like you know like i had that much energy pulsing through my body there and uh it was just like whoa i could why am i not living here you know 
the big question and then I go oh yeah there's like places in the Pacific Northwest I feel this too <laughs> yeah so yeah oh yeah like I feel that in the Cascades too so um that's that might be why I'm not but like um there is places that yeah that definitely have that like um there's some something going on there that um so I have this other theory that like when you go to these places of high energy, like um, so like you were in Moab, I, I think you bring some of that energy with you. Like, mm -hmm. like I think and and I I think that um that transfer like like think of us as a con like we're a conductor of electricity because I mean we're mostly water so we're conductors anyway so we're like absorbing that energy from say Moab and then you're bringing it back to the cascades and you're you're connecting energies and I think that makes um our planet I think that helps our planet heal actually I think it recharges there's, there's it something sense. to it yeah that makes sense I um I know just on like a personal level, like uh, when I, and this is one of the reasons I like going out in the woods and hiking so much is I feel like I'm bringing that, like I'm collecting the energy out there and bringing it back into the world, you know, like it's, I've always kind of felt that like uh, I have more to contribute when I um, have the, um, I have that energy in me, just on that like real simple level of like, I get energized from hiking and then I go in, into like a social situation and I have much more to give to people than if I was sitting in my living room and went into a social situation. Yeah. You know, they're very different like um, things. And that's like, uh, you can just, you can write it off as something like, oh, it just makes me happy. And then I'm bringing, in, but like, uh, I think when we get kind of more like uh, attuned and like um, start like, having awareness and paying attention um there there's more to it than like uh these uh, simple aloof little oh well it just makes me happy you know there is there is more to it like you're saying that we're actually doing something uh contributing something to the planet by doing this kind of thing yeah. um, and it's and, and the reason i think that is I just inquire about it like I just ask the questions to myself and I sit with the questions and like I ask if that's true and then like it, if it resonates as true in my soul then it, um that is like uh then I, I I find that like that is my evaluation of like whether something does contain truth to it you know yeah, it's like your personal barometer or something. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just simple, like, it's a simple inquiry. It's just, like, asking the question, is this, like, does this place contain more energy than, you know, or is this is this place energizing me? Just the ask myself the question and then, like, sit with it, and the, a yes or no will come to the... Yeah. And there's sure. no paperwork in nature, so you, yeah. 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 you don't have to get bogged down by the, the after work of it. You just, you just get yeah. the answer. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then, uh, you know, that like that, that method of inquiry, you can kind of bring into all your relationships and everything. Like, is this person draining me or am I, or like, you know, any, anything that like, uh, is this, is it, being around this person does that inspire me bring um, more excitement um you can like ask your ask yourself questions and sit with it until the answer comes and like uh, uh should i get a dog from the pound um or whatever like whatever yeah. you're feeling and like you can inquire within yourself and wait for the answer and, the, and it comes and yeah. um it's always right <laughs> you know it is <laughs> It's true. But I yeah. think um, uh, we don't, we actually don't have to learn. We just have to remember what we already know. Right. You know, yeah. we're just like remembering that purpose or that mission. And, and the question, I always think, does this align with my purpose? You know, like, that's how sure. I think of it in my head. That's how I ask sure. it. And oh, cool. I, I like how you said, like, is you know, is the situation or this person, is it draining or is it, 
is it invigorating me or draining me? And um, I think I'm basically doing the same thing by, you know, like, okay, is hanging out with this person at this time, is this, uh, is this supporting my mission or is it distracting me from my mission, you know? And so just kind of, and there's a lot of distractions in this world. So, huh. you Absolutely. know, but there's also a lot of um, opportunity for collaboration when we can mm -hmm. just open our minds to possibilities of, um, of whatever. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, yep. Because the moment you put an expectation, then you've limited your yeah. possibilities. So, yeah. so really just, um, you know, it's good to have goals. I, I'm not saying that, but, um, but yeah. So I like, uh, I, I like the term whatever. Um, <laughs> it's uh, I have this friend. Uh, he's 20 years older than me. He's one of my best friends. He's uh, um, I remember. I started hanging out with him maybe like 25 years ago or something. It's kind of been a long-term friendship of mine, but I remember him telling me his, I asked him what his religious beliefs were. And he said, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, that's his religious. And I, and like, cause he was someone I kind of aspired to be, you know? And I was like, that's it. Like, it's what, whatever, you know, like I just, and that's always kind of been my like, um when people ask me like what are, what are your what's your religion or like whatever you know <laughs> <laughs> it's true it, yeah <laughs> it's, i mean that's such a random question right you really think it about is. it because yeah you know uh, i always think um yeah no that's <laughs> i love that answer <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah it's a funny answer to that question it is it, it, it's funny, but it's also profound. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. You know? It's also really true. Like you were saying, like, yeah. is this a truth or not? And it's like, right. you know, that is like, yeah, whatever. I, yeah. I, I made up a religion for myself about 15 years ago, I think. And I called it ARG, an alien robot god. <laughs> oh, nice. And so, so I, like, in my own head, I sometimes, you know, like, if you, you'll just say, like, Oh my god, or something like that. In my head, I'd say, "Oh my arg." <laughs> nice. <laughs> like no That's one else awesome. knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. Just always made me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I used to. Um, I was raised Catholic, and they do the um, like uh, the prayer, the like cl closing or the Lord's prayer or something. And it's every time they say "protect us from evil," I would always say "protect us from weevils." <laughs> and uh, I, my like whole childhood I would say that in my head weevils instead of evil and it like I think just kind of gave it a different like tone you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of have your own spin on it because yeah yeah it's like, like I, that just I don't want to think about that as a five-year-old you know like yeah let's call them, let's call it weevils instead <laughs> way more approachable <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's funny um well I don't want to take up too much of your time I I um I know like you're busy and and you're on the road and um you probably want to get home after such a long trip so but I just I wanted to tell you um how grateful I am that you would take the time and chat and um time. and just you know talk about whatever <laughs> yeah yeah well I'm I'm grateful for you I really like um uh see you as a shining light in this world and um just i'm just really proud of you as a, a person and um i think uh you deserve everything you want thank you that's like yeah. i didn't know you were gonna bring me to tears um <laughs> only one other person that did that to me <laughs> <laughs> but i don't thank you that means a lot because i respect i respect what you do and all your work so thank you any, anything you ever need from me, let me know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. It's just the way it goes. Um, well, have a safe drive home. Thanks. And uh, yeah, keep doing what you're doing because it's awesome. <laughs> okay. All right. Awesome. Much Bye. Bye. If you like what I'm creating here on my virtual campfire, please subscribe and give me five-star reviews so that I know these conversations are worthwhile to others. I love doing this and I hope you love listening.
Thank you.